to another episode of Crossfire Chat. My name is Mark Resimius and I'm joined today with... I'm Eleonora Sinyembo and I'm really excited for another episode. Our guest today is John Richard with John Richard Salon. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Morning. Thank you for joining us today, John. It's been it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So, John, you do hair, and I'm always fascinated with people who do hair because I do my own hair, and I have no technique behind it. So, yeah. um, is there something that's you know special and proper to your salon? Well, actually, there is. I uh, back in 2001, I started doing these extensions, and the extensions that was that I do actually was created over in England. And if you look at Boy George, they use him as a guinea pig. A bunch of hairdressers got together because they wanted to figure out how to do something other than a weave. Because mm -hmm. black women all have weaves, mm -hmm. and yeah. white girls can't have weaves because it rips their hair out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they use Boy George as a guinea pig. So if you look at him later in his career in the 80s and early 90s, he has hair coming out of the back of his hat. Mm -hmm. That's these guys that did this. So okay. I took the class in 2001. I wasn't working with Nexus at the time because I quit. Because um, I want to see what everybody else is doing. Because I normally work the circuits at these hair mm -hmm. hair shows, mm -hmm. and this guy was doing these extensions. Like, what is that? <laughs> he was working on hair that was three inches long. It looked horrible, but <laughs> but it took eight hours to do it. I thought that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I went back a, a month later you know, in Chicago, took the class, started working with the hair, trying to figure it all out, and and then something interesting happened in 2012. A girl named Becky showed up. And she was frustrated because she's just gone through chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. She had breast cancer survivor, and nobody could do her hair. Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, come on, let's take a look. I've done short hair before." Mm -hmm. She came in. She took her wig off, and her hair was about a quarter of an inch long. I said, "Why don't we wait another six weeks, and so I can, I can do your hair?" Then she's like, mm -hmm. "You could do my hair." I go, "Well, it's, it's going to be curly hair. Is that okay?" She goes, "Well, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I just want hair." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So came back. I was explaining to the girl. Esme Murphy from Channel 4 News, mm -hmm. she came in the week before she was supposed to come in. Becky, I was telling you about this this procedure I'm doing. At the time, there's only two people in the world that could do this. Wow. It was me and the guy over in England that taught me how to do it. Wow. And so Esme Murphy left a message the next morning and said, Hey, John, um, this is fascinating. I'd like to do a story on Becky. Can you call her? Mm -hmm. Like, call a chemo girl? Has to be, like, I'm not sure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I called her. She goes, John, if it's going to help other people, I'll do it. I'm like, no. really? Lord, yeah. Yeah. She goes, awesome. yeah, I'll do it. So we did the story. Mm -hmm. It went viral. I mean, literally it went viral. Mm -hmm. I had people, again, only God could have done this. I, I didn't know that this was coming. Mm -hmm. But God had brought me people from all over the world, from Australia, mm -hmm. from, wow. from the, um, down in South America. I mean, Russia, India. I mean, just because I'm so... Uh, have such a unique uh, thing that I do with curls. Yeah. So it's been an eye-opening experience, uh, but but that would be it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's really awesome. I think that we should open up in a word of prayer. And then Amen. Let's we'll do that. All right. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We want to give you thanks for being with us today as we uh, go through another episode of Crossfire Chat. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would just flow through this today, and we ask that you bless each and every one of us. And Lord, we ask that also you will bless the viewers that are watching and that you will touch the hearts and lives of the people that are out there. And Lord, uh, we just give you all the thanks for none of this could be possible without you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we just glorify your holy name, Jesus, in your name. Amen. 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 All right. Oh. All right, so um, John, you did talk a little bit about you know the salon and the girl coming in, but how did you know you wanted to open a salon? <laughs> I got the funniest story about that. Oh. Okay, <laughs> um, before I got saved, I, I moved back from Omaha. I lived in Omaha. Mm -hmm. I went to Boys Town. Eight of my nine brothers went to Boys Town, by the way. Yeah. I have uh, uh, sixteen siblings, but. Um, I started going to the bars before I got saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my mom kept saying, John, you need to do hair because there was five people in my family that done hair. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wow. did hair at the time. Oh, okay. Like, I'm not going to do hair. I'm not going to be that guy that does hair. Mm -hmm. One of my friends is going to laugh at me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, stylist, a male. So I started going to the bars, like down the Oz, Oz nightclub. And I was meeting all these guys that were hairstylists that were heterosexual. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. you're not gay? Mm -hmm. Well, no. I, I. So anyway, long story short, they talked me into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of being a, uh, a hairdresser, like a cosmetologist, mm -hmm. the only reason I took a barber because it was less time to do it. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in school that long. Yeah. <laughs> so I chose barber. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. how I got into all this. And 
Um, when I got saved, I wrote in my Bible, my original Bible, prayer chair, mm -hmm. testimonial chair, all these little notes, because I wanted to be a minister mm. in, in my chair. Mm -hmm. and I felt like that would be a cool thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. long story short, that's what I do now. Amazing. Um, but... You know, doing the hair thing, I just, the last thing I ever thought I'd be doing, I mean, just the last thing I thought I'd ever be doing is doing hair. I, I want to be a highway patrol then, when mm -hmm. I was little. And uh, I got sick when I was 15 years old with colitis, so I couldn't pass the test. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the physical side, so never got to do that. I've worked with cars my whole life. Um, but, uh, no, I, this is the last thing I thought I'd ever be doing that is hair Yeah. 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 Funny. That, that kind of brings me to the verse that I searched for last night, you know, after we had talked. Um, you know, I, I usually like to go with the verse that kind of um, goes with uh, the theme of our show. Mm -hmm. And I pray about it and I ask the Lord to, you know, give me direction. And last night was more of a struggle as we kind of talked about yeah. it earlier. Well, I think the perfect verse kind of came out, you know, at mm -hmm. the last. I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And then I opened it up here and it is Psalms 5 uh, through 3. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct you in your path. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that. But mm -hmm. when we grasp that, I mean, your journey I get it. talks yeah. exactly like that. It's totally you know? exactly right. Yeah. Trust yeah. in the Lord with all your heart. Exactly. And I think what I love about Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is that it starts from trust. Mm -hmm. And some of the times when we feel like we've been given a gift, we think, okay, now I have these abilities that I'm going to put my trust in. And I'm going to be great because of my abilities. But... Proverbs 3 reminds us that it's trusting in God because God yep. is the giver <laughs> of is. the abilities. Yeah. And that's how we're set apart. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, John, explain how God moved you spiritually and mentally um, through this process. Was there a specific time where God said, okay, John, it's time for me to take over and for you to step aside? Mm -hmm. Is there a particular time that you... This is the funniest thing. It is, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a moment there where God said, okay, enough of your, your games. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking over now. Yeah. Amen, yeah. And so what happened was I was in the choir at Emmanuel Christian Center, mm -hmm. and a Nolan just took over the, the worship mm -hmm. music. So by that time, there was two of us that were doing, two males that were doing all the solos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He cut all that off. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to sing for us, you have to join the choir. So mm -hmm. like 120, 130 people joined the choir. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was a big, massive choir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was actually a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I was pouting because I wasn't getting any songs to sing. Mm -hmm. So there was a song called When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Mm -hmm. And there's a real high note at the very end. Okay. I thought, if I can hit that, <laughs> I know I'll get the song. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I practiced. I practiced. So what I learned that when you, when you warm up your voice, if you blow out your speaking voice, you can hit the high notes. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it was me. So well, on Wednesday, mm -hmm. the next day, the next week, I hit that night that note beautifully, and Nolan looked right at me and goes, "Is that you, John?" I go, "Yeah, that was me." <laughs> you want to do the song? It's like, sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I well, you really insist, you know? It's okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I was just it's like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so that morning, I woke up and I and I because I was complaining that we had to wear these crummy robes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I just bought these three beautiful thousand dollar suits, three oh, each. Yeah. I was supposed to go to this European tour, but I got canceled because the director of education for Nexus got fired. Okay. So I was kind of angry and kind of bitter. Yeah. So I was putting on my suit, and I was like, you know, Lord, I, I'm going to wear my spectator shoes. At least people can see my shoes. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I wore the brightest tie I could wear, mm -hmm. and I just thought, Lord, because people kept saying, John, you have a really great voice. When people start talking about you like that, you need to run. Yeah. As fast as you can away from these people. Yeah. Because <laughs> God is about to humble you. Yeah. So um, I, I, I just wore the brightest stuff I could find that where the robe wouldn't cover. Okay. So we went through the, the, the song, went really good. Nolan even high fived me. I thought, this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. So this is my moment because they videotape everything, you know? Yeah. So uh, we did the run through. They started the song, the, the service with the song. And I believe it was Palm Sunday. Okay. And so instead of staying back with the choir, I walked right to the, to the front of the, of the sanctuary mm -hmm. where the pastor usually speaks. Okay, yep. And I went, oh, I'm too far. I shouldn't. I turned around like, my wife was like, what are you doing? And I couldn't move. 
Oh. It was, I don't know if it was stage fright yeah. or like God planted my feet down. I couldn't move. So the music started, the, everything's great, the roots clapping, waving the, the palm branches. The second verse came, I hit the third verse by accident. And it took all my air out of my diaphragm. I was fumbling over the words. I wasn't hitting any notes. Oh, yeah. I was having this out-of-body experience, like this cannot be happening to me. Mm -hmm. This is my moment. And I had, then I thought, well, I didn't know what, what planet I was on, so I just sang the third verse again. I kind of looked over at my wife, mm -hmm. and she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, help! <laughs> like that. And uh, so then at the very end, I thought, I've already blown a time, but it's going to go for it. Yeah. yeah. I sound like Tarzan at the end. Oh, wow. And I kind of just walked away I, with my tail between my legs, and I had to sit in front with the worship singers for another 50 minutes. Oh, man. And I couldn't get, I, I wanted to leave, and I couldn't even get out of my chair. Yeah. And so we got in the choir room, and it was quiet. Usually it's really rambunctious. Got home. <laughs> And I, and I went to my prayer room, and I said, Lord, what happened? Yeah. I thought I, I thought this is what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. And I opened the Bible up, and I went to Isaiah, and it says, I will share my glory with no one. Ooh. Kind of reminds me of Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Oh, he wanted the glory. Exactly. Yeah. And so I said, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I said, whatever you want me to do, I will do it, but I'm done with singing. Mm -hmm. It's yep. not my calling. My wife kept saying, John, we're not going to Nashville like you want to do this. Yeah. Because you have a great voice, but you don't have it. You can't hit those money, those money notes. It's like <laughs> you're just so blunt. <laughs> like a, like a sometimes smoke. you need a person yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Just so yeah. blunt. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So then uh, that kind of put me into this place where uh, in 2004, um, my first miracle happened. Mm -hmm. It was a glorious thing, and I'll share that a little bit later. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Nor do you want to read Daniel 4.32? Oh, yeah, absolutely, because you mentioned Nebuchadnezzar, yeah, yeah. and um, this is something that, you know, I was um, reading in my Bible, and it's one of those interesting stories where God demonstrates that he, in fact, will not share his glory yeah. with any man. No one. And so um, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream, and he asks for interpretation, and Daniel tells him that for seven years you're going to be insane until you realize that it all came from God. And so Nebuchadnezzar makes this mistake in Daniel 4 from verse 28. He um, walks out on his balcony. He's like, look at great Babylon. And I've built it with my might. And on um, verse 32 of Daniel 4, the Bible says, And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be of the beast. And this is a voice that came from heaven mm -hmm. speaking to him while he was on his balcony. And the Bible says, that um, they shall make you eat grass as oxen, seven, time, seven times shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will. And I think, you know, this verse kind of shows that God is the one who gives kingdom to men. Mm -hmm. And in order for him to give it to men, it has to belong to him. And Nebuchadnezzar failed to realize that God was the owner mm -hmm. of whatever he thought he had built. Huh? And I love how that tied into your story of, you know, you wore the brightest shoes you could because yeah. you're like, this is my <laughs> I want moment. to look great for that. And yeah. God, look at me how yeah, beautiful exactly. I am, you know. Yeah. And God was I like, sound. actually, it's my moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'll show you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I love that God has those gentle moments where yeah. he brings us back. And it's mm -hmm. not to bring shame on us, but it's like a yeah. gentle nudge of, hey, yeah. Look, well, it's kind of like the me. verse that you read right after mm -hmm. when you were in your prayer room. You yeah, know, you exactly. opened up the book. That was the gentle moment. Exactly. That, yeah, I'll share my glory with no one. Yeah. Yeah. And he meant it. He yeah. means Absolutely. That. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you for, for your Bible. Yeah. 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 Sharing that. <laughs> um, so what uh, t what miracle, I guess, that God has done in your life and in your career that kind of sticks out with you the most as you've gone through your journey? <sighs> Boy, you know, there's so many, Mark. Yeah. I, I had to really think about this, but... I think probably the one that I'd like to talk about is the first one Okay. that happened in my salon. Mm -hmm. Her name is Pat. Um, it was right after all that happened with the, you know, the sound like Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> and when, and I was in Vegas uh, doing a runway show um, in, the, in that summer. And uh, I was, we did the run through at 1030 in the morning. Well, the show didn't start until... 10.30 at night. It's like, why are we here so early? Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 12 I'm, hours. I you know, club seven on the strip. And so yeah. okay. I went back to my room. I took a nap. And I said, I woke up four hours later. I said, Lord, I woke up laughing. You ever wake up laughing? Mm. This is the most strange sensation. I can't it say that I have. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, Lord, what was, I, what was I dreaming? 
So I said, uh, you want to play some Bible bingo? Mm -hmm. So I took the Gideon's Bible up because I, I, I gave my Bible away that morning for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I said, Lord, I sat up, I said, well, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Um, I'm just going to open the Bible, I'm going to close my eyes, and put my finger down, and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I'm laughing. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Don't ever do that, because God will hold you to it. He so will. I did that, and, mm -hmm. I, and I, I closed my eyes, I opened the Bible, and I went like this. I looked down, and went, you got to be kidding me. Because people could tell me, you know, John, you should write a story about your life, write a book about your life. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything until God mm -hmm. himself tells me to do it. Yeah. Well, it says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 2, mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, write down all the things I've shown you in a book. Wow. wow. I went, wow. you got to be kidding me. I didn't oh. know that was in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So I shut it. I'm like, wait a minute, where was that again? <laughs> well, uh, the heading of, the, of that chapter mm -hmm. is restoration. Oh. Beautiful. And that's where this started, mm -hmm. my book. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, so what happened was the first miracle that happened in my salon was in 2004. Mm -hmm. Her name is Pat. She came to me in, in 1999. She goes, now that I found you, because she has curly hair, because um, I just styled her hair really nice, she didn't have to go home and blow over you do it. You want to do some bartering? I go, what do you got? She goes, braces. I went, you're an orthodontist? Because my, both my kids needed braces. It's like, oh, wow. yeah, let's do that. So we bartered four sets of braces. My daughter needed two sets because they had to take some teeth out and redo things. And mm -hmm. my son and then my, my wife had surgery on her, on her jaw and then they restructure some things and because of TMJ. And so we borrowed her four sets of braces. So right in the middle of this, she didn't show up for her appointment. I'm panicking. I'm like, oh, no. is she mad at me? Yeah. Did she, did she cancel everything? So I call. I said, Pat, this is John Richards. Uh, you missed your appointment because she loved getting her hair done every four mm -hmm. weeks. Call me. And she called me two weeks later. She goes, John, I'm so sorry. I missed your appointment. I apologize. I had an aneurysm, but it didn't kill me. Oh, I have to lay so in bed for two months, mm -hmm. lay still, mm -hmm. like don't move my neck, because if I move my neck, I'll die. Oh. I went, okay. I said, well, can I come over to your house? I'll do your kid's hair and your husband's hair. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fine. We'll do that. So I went over to see her. She's laying in bed. Mm -hmm. I did her kid's hair. I did her husband's hair. I did that. And that started in March mm -hmm. of 2004. Mm -hmm. Well, two days before Christmas, she walks in and her, she's well, her husband. Mm -hmm. I go, uh, where's Doug? She goes, well, I, I draw myself on. Oh, you must be doing really good, huh? Yeah. She goes, well, John, uh, and she sat down. She started crying. She's had her head in like this. And she goes, I'm too young to die, John. I just, I have two kids, young kids I got to raise. And, and she's sobbing. I'm like, stop. What's going on? She goes, they wanted a surgeon. The surgeon, I'm only going to come out of 5% uh, normal mm -hmm. if I come out at all. I went, oh, because I wanted to get her out of, I wanted to get her mind out of something else. I said, you remember those five car accidents I was in? She was like, what? I was rear-ended four times and broadsided from 1990 to 1993. Mm -hmm. Four and a half herniated discs in my body. Wow. And the church I was going to, at Emmanuel, uh, in 1996, I, I went down for prayer. And they said, if anybody's sick, come on down and we'll pray for you. Yeah. And I got healed. Yeah. She's Praise like, what? I walked out of there because I was limping. I walked in limping. I walked out normal. She's Praise like. What? Awesome. She was like, I got healed. It's like, I said, Pat, God has no respect for persons. Mm -hmm. He will do it. If you just ask him, he'll do it for anybody. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's Christmas. Two days before Christmas, let's ask God for a miracle. Yeah. She's like, okay. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, I'll, I'll do that. Because mm -hmm. um, she was desperate. And I, and I learned that when people get the miracles that God has uh, brought through my life and my salon, they, they're desperate. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she, like she had nothing left. She just had to do what she had to do to get that miracle. Yeah. Well, I prayed for her and she left. And she comes in every 30 days. So right about, about 30 minutes before she was coming in, this woman called me that was across the street at Embassy Suites. Mm -hmm. I'm, in the, I'm in the Lutheran Brotherhood building. That's what it was called back then. She goes, I'm across the street at Embassy. Can you get me in for a color today? I go, you got to come right now. Yeah. She goes, just walk over the skyway. She goes, yeah, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Because I have a girl coming in at, at 12. So she goes, okay. So she came in. I did her hair. put the hair color on really quickly because I didn't have much time. And so Pat walks in. So I go and greet her, give her a hug. It's like literally hugging a board because she's so stiff. Yeah. And, and so I, and she goes, and she's smiling. I go, Pat, you look like you swallowed a canary. What's up? She goes, John, you should really think about changing careers. I'm like, now why would I want to do that? <laughs> she goes, it's gone. I go, what's gone? Because I forgot. Yeah. She goes, the, the aneurysm? It's gone, so I go, I'm just staring Lord, like, that is so cool. What? Yeah. So the girl sitting in my chair, she turns around, she goes, excuse me, guys, 
what aneurysm? Like, kind of like angry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she walks in and she goes, um, I had an aneurysm and I had this medication. She goes, I know the medication. Mm -hmm. She's a surgeon, a brain surgeon sitting in my chair. Oh, wow. I'm like, what are the chances of that happening? Yeah. Mm. So she's explaining all this to the brain surgeon. She goes, the medication worked right? She goes, no, the medication wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And John prayed for me and God, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. She just couldn't believe this. So I, I'm just chuckling. I'm, I'm mixing pad color. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you're so funny. Yeah. This is so cool. Because I think a lot of times uh, surgeons and doctors think that it's their power. Mm. It's not their power. Yeah. God gives us all the technology, Amen. but in the end, for whatever reason, God wanted her to see that she was completely healed Amen. without the power of the medicine. Mm -hmm. That was a really great moment. That was the first miracle in my salon. That is, I thought, this is going to be a great story for my book. Yeah, God really just told me neat. to write a book. Exactly. So and you have many like, miracles. And then, exactly, yeah, zero to 55. Yeah, yeah oh. there's a lot of miracles in there. So yeah. really I would cool. encourage a lot of people to you know go ahead and get the book and read it. Exactly. And, and I think it's such a great story of hope because God is using you exactly in the field where he placed you. Yeah. Um, it, wasn't, if it wasn't for that moment of being exactly. on stage. I don't know where I would be. I'd be mm. I told Lynette, my wife, oh, we're going to get a bus. We're going to Nashville. Yeah. And I was really serious. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm going to leave you over, hand you over to God because I'm, I, you, I can't talk to you anymore. Yeah. So God literally <laughs> had to deal with me harshly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he'll do that too. He'll do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, with anybody, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Exactly. He'll take you out if he needs to. Yeah. So yeah. He, he brought me back to this place. So without mm -hmm. that moment, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God did that. That's yeah, exactly. pretty cool. It's amazing. Yeah. And I love how your story happens in the salon. God uses you in the salon. Yeah, that's the right. People that come it, to get their hair it's done. The salon, the and they walk out of Jesus. You know what happened one time? A girl was coming in from Indiana. Uh, this was five years ago, and it was Good Friday. Mm -hmm. And I always pray for the girl before they come. It's like, Lord, just bless this woman, anoint the place, and just bring your glory and, and, do, and perform miracles. Mm -hmm. My salon filled up with this fragrance. Mm -hmm. I thought, it smells like cinnamon. Mm -hmm. It was Good Friday. So I looked up cinnamon. Well, cinnamon they used to wash the Holy of Holies down the walls down to make it holy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then a week later, the girl reminded me that gave me this whole this anointing oil, mm -hmm. that it was actually uh, Good Friday was last week. I'm like, because I didn't know it was Good Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She reminds me. She goes, well, this is some oil. And I, and I opened it up, and it smelled like that. Frankincense and myrrh and, mm -hmm. and cinnamon. Wow. It was anointing oil. So God was telling me that this place is anointed. Mm -hmm. My whole salon filled with this, this fragrance of frankincense and myrtle and yeah. cinnamon so it's like it's anointed mm -hmm. God, it's my place is anointed exactly. with that. Well, anywhere yeah. where God goes mm -hmm. or where yeah. we go mm -hmm. it's anointed yeah. Yeah. any room Amen. you walk into yeah. we're bringing the glory with us Amen. and yeah. God That's will mark his presence absolutely yeah. and it's in the marketplace exactly yeah. doing this in the marketplace is really cool yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty neat yeah. it's a really cool mm -hmm. thing it's like yeah. wow Lord I, exactly. you know even when I got saved I wrote down in my, my old Bible prayer chair um, testimonial chair and God honored that. That's he put exactly. that in me right when I got saved. I'm yeah. a shepherd's in it. Jesus People Church. Exactly. That's beautiful. Yeah. Pretty cool. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And I think this is a great message for people watching who think God can use them because they're called in something that they don't think aligns with ministry. Yeah. God will use you where he's placed you. He will. And I think, you know, I'm people should. That. Exactly. I'm a hairdresser. Yeah. 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 And I mean, people should not limit yeah. themselves to, well, I wasn't called to be a pastor. Yeah. God could use you as a vet. God could use you as a nurse. God could use you out there in the Any market. Field. God could, yeah. work, could yeah. use you in an aisle in the supermarket. And so I think mm -hmm. um, it's shouldn't we should not limit what god can do no, based yeah. on what never we expect ever, to, never, never. exactly you know my wife kept pounding on me it's like john i know you want to be a minister but you're a minister where you're at exactly, yeah. exactly. and i finally yeah. clicked light bulb mm -hmm. went on like you're right Absolutely. and every time that a woman comes in i pray for them yeah. like yesterday i had a girl come in from indiana her life was a mess her her husband walked away from the four girls mm -hmm. they never gave him a, never gave her a dime she gone through cancer. The guy that she was living with was bipolar. Mm. Just a disaster. Uh, tormented her. Um, she's completely broke. Like, what are you doing here? Mm. You're spending all this money on your hair. She's. I had. I, I had a fundraiser. Mm. I thought this is the last thing that I, would make me feel better. Yeah. I had a woman one time sell her clothes mm. to get her hair done. Oh, she wow. sold her clothes. Wow. That's how desperate these women that have come in to get their mm -hmm. hair done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, when, you, when these girls will come in, if you can see the scars that they have, mm -hmm. you'd be horrified. Yeah. Right. Going through cancer. Mm -hmm. But when they come in, all, all I see is this little short hair, like a, like a boy haircut. Mm -hmm. And I get to give them their last piece of the puzzle. Exactly. 
and it's restoration for them. It's, awesome. it's a restoration. It's, beautiful. it's like, God, my whole life is about restoration. You did this and you put this in me and you, yeah. you brought this to me. And mm-hmm. I'm just so honored that, you know, we, we yeah. prayed together at the, end, at the end of, we cried together and mm-hmm. we hugged and I blessed her. And that's what we do every time a chemo girl comes in. It's just, it's, you know, the words are, it's breathtaking. Exactly. Yeah. With these girls that, yeah. Allow me to do this for them. Yeah. And God lets me do that. What a miracle. It's, it's a miracle. It's a, it's a physical miracle. It's yeah. a handmade miracle that, that I do with your hands. But God downloaded this mm-hmm. to me and, and to my team. And, and so we get to help people from all over the world. Yeah. What a wonderful message. That's yeah. really awesome. Pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much, John. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ellie, would you like to close us in prayer today? Of course, absolutely. Well, um, before I close, John, thank you again yes. for sharing what God does through you. Um, I think, Praise you know, I love when God has unexpected stories. We've had ministers, we've had evangelists, we've had people that are missionaries come on the show. And um, now that you're a hairdresser, yeah. you know, it, it kind of brings a whole new perspective of what kind of people God uses because he does use everyone according to their gifts. Mm-hmm. And I love that your story is all about leaning into what God has placed in you, but also allowing him to work through you to bring restoration, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And um, thank you for writing a book about it, too. Oh, yeah. So it's always in there. And you know, it was a hard, hard thing read to read about it life. and, you know, yeah. see that God's hands are at work in your salon. Um, So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, because you've planned this episode yourself. And God, every single word that we've spoken was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, because your hands and feet work through this episode. And thank you, God, for John Richards, who you use in John Richards' salon. Thank you, God, because you have placed the gifts in him that he needed in order to be successful in what he does. And God, you've anointed his salon so that your work can be done in it. God, I pray for every person that may be watching this that may have lost hope because they thought their situation was too desperate. I pray that, God, you show them that just as the girls that come in, for chemo girls, come out with hope and restoration, that, God, there is still hope for restoration in their lives. God, I pray for any person that may be doubting the fact that you've called them to... um minister to others. God, I pray that any doubts that may come from the field that they're called into or anything that they might think stops them from being used by you, I pray that, God, you show them that just as you use John Richards in a salon, you can use them in whatever you've called them to do. I pray that, God, you honor your own name in their lives because, God, you're the one who gives every great gift and ability. I pray that, God, you help them so that they can use what you've given them to show you through it, what everything they do. And I pray that, God, you help them go out into the world carrying your mark yes, on them so that whatever they do, whatever they produce with their gifts and abilities, shows that you are a great God, that you are love, and that you are ready to show into the word into the world that we live in. We pray that God, um, for any person watching this, that you're, that this message hits the right spot in their hearts, that God, you work through everything that we've done here and that you bring it to fruition. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, John, for amen. joining us today. That's a pleasure. Thank pleasure you again. Tell. And thank you to all of you who are watching. We are so thankful for another episode and we can't wait to make another one. Thank you. Thank you.